Hello, folks, and welcome to the Democratizing SEO podcast, a podcast for marketers who seek to have a better understanding of the SEO channel in order to engage with it more successfully. My name is Austin Asezabo. I am an SEO consultant and your host for this podcast. You know, every time there's an algorithm update, whether confirmed or not, there's a lot of speculation and theorizing about Google search. Besides the typical SEO is dead type of rhetoric that tends to follow algo updates, one thing I often see is a hell of a lot of entitlement. There's an entitlement around the traffic one receives from search and specifically from Google search. Marketers tend to forget that traffic from search engines is borrowed users. What do I mean by borrowed users? As I like to say, SEO is for users, not search engines. We acquire users via search engines, but we don't market to search engines. This isn't just a play on words. I think every marketer should have this notion in mind because it will help them focus on what's important. Users, not search engines. Traffic acquisition, that's not direct, is borrowed. Acquiring traffic via Google search is borrowing the users of Google. The users of Google know to use Google for the search because of all the marketing that the company carries out. Google search is an amazing service. It's because they have an amazing service that people use their service almost by default. Now, we can get into the details of how they market to their users and how they ensure the brand is front of mind and and all of that. Bottom line is that they provide a service for users and the majority of users prefer to use Google service for their search. I say this to say, as part of Google's objective to provide the best service to their users, they need to have a high standard to their service. And as such, they need to influence websites to have a high standard should they want to continue to acquire traffic from search. Organic traffic? Via search, it's not a right. Ranking number one on Google is not a given. Consistently having the highest market share amongst competing brands is not by happenstance. It's earned. Being number one and staying number one across several high demand keywords requires work. There's an unspoken agreement, if you like, between you and Google For their users, Googles, they need to present the best, most appropriate websites, web pages for a given query. For them to show your websites, your web page to their users, you need to show that you're deserving of their users. As a reward for doing this, you receive the traffic from their users because in a way, they vouch for you, your website, your web page. You receive this acquired traffic for as long as you show that you're the best, most appropriate website, web page for the given query. How do you achieve this? By focusing on users. By focusing on users, you align yourself with Google's agenda to serve users as best as possible. Now, Google cannot make you do this. They don't have any ownership of your website. What they can do, however, is highly influence you to consider users and to consider them for as long as you have a website. This is to say, if user demand changes, you must adjust to the changes as Google themselves will. A failure to adjust to user demand leads to what? It leads to another website, another web page ranking higher than you. Why? Because they show better than you that they are the best, most appropriate website, web page for the given query, which Google needs to service for their users. The relationship dynamic between you and Google is centered on the common goal to serve the user as best as possible. If Google is doing this and you are doing this, you're aligned, you acquire their users. If Google continues to do this and you do not, you no longer acquire their users. And this is fair, is it not? Why should Google continue to send traffic your way when you're not showing that you're catering to their users? 
Why should they continue to rank you highly and in a way vouch for your site to their users? And as established, it's their users. You're simply borrowing them when the traffic comes via search. The unspoken agreement is that you treat them well. Put yourself in the shoes of a searcher. Imagine you search for something on Google and all 10 results on the front page are website you visit only to determine that all 10 are not to your liking. Imagine having this experience for weeks, months. Every time you use Google, you're shown results of websites that do not care about your browsing experience. Do you think you'll continue to use Google when you know of at least two alternative search engines that provide the same service as Google? At some point, you're going to want to see if you will get a better set of results from those other search engines, wouldn't you? This is why Google is constantly making sure they service their users as best as possible. They do so more so than other search engines, perhaps. As the number one search engine, would you expect anything less? Of course not. Being number one means the bar is constantly being raised. It means you are the one constantly raising the bar. The alternative of someone else doing so means they win the business. In this case, users. This is true for search engines. This is true for websites. You're not entitled to the users you acquire via search. You acquire them by earning their visit, a visit which is borrowed from search. Serving them as best as you can consistently is a small price to pay for this acquired traffic. All right, folks, let's leave it there for now. Stay tuned for more from Democratizing SEO. Subscribe to the podcast. You can find it on your podcasting app of choice. All right, folks. My name is Austin Esesabo. I'm an SEO guy. I'll be with you on a weekly basis to enlighten you on wielding SEO to success. That'll do it for now, folks. Until next time. Bye for now.